and we'll be able to um, go back and review the material and so that you'll have it available for your review as well. Um, there are links for the district course requirements and the books for the course, although the bookstore has not been very forthcoming about telling me what is or isn't available and when. Um, and one of the books, well, both of the books are now discontinued. One of them was just recently discontinued the beginning of this month with no warning. So we're going to talk about book availability when we get down to that place in the ICR. Um, but uh, there were a couple of other matters I did want to cover. Um, any student with a documented disability needing academic accommodations is required to contact the Student Accessibility Resources Office. There's one of those on each of the campuses. Since this class is offered through the Northeast Campus, I recommend that you contact the Northeast Campus Student Accessibility Resources Office to make an appointment with Kim Eason, the coordinator of SAR. All discussions are confidential. Um, some SAR accommodations do require early planning, so and accommodations are not provided retroactively. So I recommend that you contact SAR as early in the semester as possible. That that office is responsible for approving and coordinating all disability-related services. Um, they will provide you with an accommodations letter, which you will need to send a copy of to me so that I will be able to then provide you with the accommodations that are granted. All granted accommodations will be provided 100%, but I can only begin providing those accommodations once I receive a copy of the SAR letter detailing it. I also do like to meet with students who have accommodations, not to discuss why they have accommodations, but rather to discuss how best to provide those accommodations to ensure that you get the best benefit out of the accommodations that have been granted, whether it's extra time, which we can provide for um, through the testing system on Blackboard, or it's a note taker, etc. I just need to know what's involved so that I can ensure that whatever accommodations are being granted um, are being received in a manner that will ensure that you are getting the best benefit from those accommodations. Since we're not on campus, I'm not going to go over campus carry. You're perfectly capable of reading that on your own. We do do course evaluations. Evaluations are available from the 10th of September through the end of the semester. I recommend that everyone evaluate the course. The more evaluations we get, the more feedback we have on what's working and what isn't. In addition, um, I recommend that you do the evaluations toward the end of the class so that you'll be evaluating the entire course and not just the first few weeks. Um, there's a link for the course evaluations in the ICR. There's a link on the left-hand side column on the home page for the course as well. Title IX. All faculty at Tarrant County College are designated as a responsible employee and are thus required to report sexual misconduct. State law requires all faculty and staff to report sexual harassment, sexual assault, dating and domestic violence, and stalking against a student or employee to the Title IX coordinator. TCC cares about the safety of our employees and students and has created this notice because interpersonal violence and sex discrimination in all forms are unacceptable. TCC is committed to holding perpetrators accountable and keeping reporting parties safe. Students' privacy is of utmost importance and TCC will strive to protect your privacy to the extent possible while complying with all applicable federal, state, and local laws and regulations as well as TCC policy. Communications with me are not privileged or confidential. 
if you tell me something or I overhear something, I am mandated by law to report it. Not only that, under Texas state law, I'm if I fail to report something that I believe has occurred, whether I have seen anything or not, but if I've heard something, even if it's hearsay, and I fail to report it, it can be grounds for firing mandatorily. So lots and lots of reports get filed. A student who desires that the details of an incident be kept confidential has two options. You can request to speak with a licensed counselor on any of the campuses. You can ask me to refer you to a counselor or you can go to counseling and advising and ask to speak to a counselor. Communications with a licensed counselor are privileged and confidential and not subject to disclosure. Alternatively, you can contact an off-campus rape crisis center. Communications there are also by law confidential. Um, Title IX also prohibits discrimination against a student based on pregnancy, childbirth, false pregnancy, termination of pregnancy, or recovery from any of these conditions, and for parenting a child under one year of age. To learn more about how to request support for pregnant and parenting students, go to the Title IX website. You can click on the link from the electronic form. It will take you to the appropriate page. On that site, you'll not only find guidelines, you'll find forms to assist with working with faculty members should you need those services. There are two textbooks for this class. You have this one. Introduction to the American Legal System, and this one, Texas Courts. The different Texas Courts books have different photographs on them, but as long as it's the same sort of ivory, tan looking book, whatever the picture is on it, that's the right book. You will not need the Texas Courts book until November. It's the last chapter. It's not a supplement that gets read along with the textbook. It's an additional chapter to the book. So we'll do it at the very end of the course. So if you don't have your Texas Courts book yet, you're OK. Um, you're not behind. It will be OK, I promise. Um, I know that some people have been having difficulty getting the, both the Texas Courts and the Introduction to the American Legal System book. I do have a PDF of the first chapter of the book. If you need that, because we're going to start talking about it beginning on Thursday, um, even if your book is on order but it isn't in on time, I would be happy to send you individually the PDF file of the book. Normally, if we were in the classroom and campuses were open, I would send you to the library. They have a copy of the book on reserve, but you can only read it in the library. Rather than sending you to the library to ask them to copy the pages out of the book to provide them with their curbside service, I asked them to make an electronic copy of the first chapter for me, and they emailed it to me, and I can email it to you. The reason I am not posting it to the course is if I provide access to that PDF to the members of the class as a whole, that would violate the copyright. But just as each of you would be entitled to make your own individual copy for personal use, I can individually provide you with the chapter because your book has been delayed to give you access that you would normally have through the library even though we are on a remote, in a remote situation because of uh, the pandemic. So if you will email me, if you'll notice on the front page of the ICR, there are actually two email addresses. You have my mytccd.edu email, and then in the comments to um, the office hours, You'll see karen.silverberg at tccd.edu. I see that email faster than the my TCC email. So if you would like to request a copy of the chapter, please email me at 
karen.silverberg at tccd.edu. And I've gone ahead and put that in the chat so you'll be able to click on it and save it and you'll have it for your use. Okay. Um, this course gives a general perspective of the law and the legal professions and the role of the paralegal or legal assistant within that system, including the ethical standards of conduct. This is the prerequisite to all of the other paralegal studies classes. This course will use lectures and hypothetical fact situations as well as the text to illustrate how the legal system is designed and operates and the role of the law office and paralegals within the legal system. This course will be taught via synchronous lectures given online via Blackboard Collaborate Ultra on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. from 6.30 till 7.50 p.m. Um, I do teach this same course at 9.30 in the morning. And you have received through an announcement at, that was emailed out as well as posted to the course homepage the links not only for these sessions in the evening, which you can also access directly through the uh, course lecture tab on the left hand side of the home page but also links to the morning class so if at any time you know you're going to have a conflict with the scheduled evening class but you're available to come to the morning class please feel free to just come to the alternate class as you may have noticed when I was taking attendance, I was checking the rosters of both the evening class and the morning class to ensure that everyone was counted as present for the class. Um, in addition to having the alternate choices for attending class, after the lectures conclude, they will uh, the recorded lectures will automatically upload in the course lecture tab as well on the page <coughs> excuse me that you clicked on to get to this lesson that is you clicked on the um, course uh, class lectures tab and a page came up and you saw the listing for um, the lectures Right above that, on the left-hand side, you should have seen three horizontal lines. If you click on those three horizontal lines, you'll get a drop-down menu, and in that menu, one of the links is Recordings. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I will be checking attendance again at the end of class for those of you who came in late. Um, I'm glad that it is now working. We're just going over the ICR. So if you end up having any questions, you'll have time at the end of class to ask those questions. <laughs> yep, I got you. I got Alicia and Mary. Um, and Renisa, Tanya, is there another name that would be on my roster? I'm not sure I have you um, to check in. So if you could give me that, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Uh. Okay, um, I will check then. You may not be on my roster right now, but I will write you down. <laughs> I thought I had waited long enough to print these. Uh, perfect, thank you. Yeah, I see you, Rebecca. I have you as well. Um, 
So the recordings will be available in that recordings tab under class lessons on the Collaborate Ultra page um, to view at any time other than class time. Yes, you are free to come either to Monday when, uh, excuse me, to the morning 9.30 a.m. Tuesday, Thursday class or to the 6.30 p.m. Tuesday, Thursday class. The classes will be on the same schedule. So we'll be within a paragraph or so in the book of each other on a daily basis. I try really hard to keep the classes in sync with each other so that we so that people can bop back and forth between the two and make sure they cover everything. In addition, um, you will have the option to watch the recordings. If you don't attend the live lectures, you won't be counted as having been present for class. However, as we're going to discuss when I get to the attendance part of this, I don't I don't drop anyone for non-attendance. So as long as you are viewing the materials, you should be in good shape in terms of taking the tests. Um, as you can see from the course outline, we're going to basically walk straight through the book. We're going to do the first two chapters and have a test. All tests will be on Blackboard. You will need to download the Proctorio extension in order to be able to take the test through Proctorio, but we will discuss that when we get closer to the first test. I don't want to throw so many different things at you the first day that everybody gets confused. Um, we will then do the first three major of chapter three, that's torts, contracts, and real property, and we'll have another test. Um, Then we'll do the rest of chapter three plus chapters four and five and have a test. We'll do chapter six, which is federal courts, and have a test. And then we will do the Texas courts booklet and we will have that last test. Um, that first week in December. Um, so you'll have that available to take. Um, and I did not change, I changed part of that date. It is not, <laughs> so I'll have to correct that date in here. Um, it'll post probably, um, looking for yeah right or, it is right it's the 3rd of December but it's the 3rd of December 2020 not 2019 just missed <laughs> the timing on that um, there is a tentative schedule of dates so you know basically what chapters to read when I will tell you what to read for each class period this course includes six examinations, five exams pertaining to discrete portions of the course, and the sixth exam is the final. It is comprehensive. It covers the entire course. All of the tests, including the final, have 40 questions and five bonus questions. Each question is worth half a point. 20 points on a test is 100 plus there's available bonus. I am going to count your five highest tests. So if you're happy with your grade going into the final, you do not have to do well on the final or really do anything other than sign into the final in order to get the grade because I'm going to drop your lowest grade. If the lowest grade is the final, you get the grade you already earned. Um, I will give you some tentative dates of when I think we'll be ready to have an exam as we're going along and then a week or a little more 
before the test. I will tell you exactly when the test will be made available. I've tried to schedule the test mostly over weekends, so the test will go live after class on a Thursday and will be due prior to classes beginning the following Tuesday, so it gives you a pretty significant window in which to take the exam. Um, and the exams are all multiple choice, true, false, and matching. I will go over in class the basics of what is covered, and I will provide a written test review for you to work with covering the, the exams as well. <clears throat> Regular and punctual attendance is expected at TCC, and we have a policy that allows faculty to drop students if they fail if they fail to attend more than 15 percent of the total course meetings um, and are not keeping up with their work about 20 25 years ago or so the texas attorney general issued a finding that when you purchase a college class you acquire a property right in that class that cannot be denied to you. And based on that finding, uh, administrative drop policies were outlawed in Texas for a time period. That finding was revoked about 10 years ago. And so we now have a policy that permits students to be administratively dropped. I think revoking that finding was wrong. I think the Attorney General who said you have a property right was correct. I think when you buy the right to attend the class, you have acquired that property and you have a right to that course and to that property, even if you choose to squander your property. In other words, if you walk away and you stop coming to class and you don't take the tests and you don't do the work, that's your right. And I can't take away your right to fail by dropping you. As a result, you need to be aware if you don't come to class and you don't do the tests when you need to, you cannot count on me to drop you. If you don't drop the class on your own, you will receive the grade you have earned, even if that is a failing grade. You are on notice that that is the policy. It is in big, bold print. All caps, do not expect the instructor to drop the class for you. Um, as a result, if you get in a binding, you forget to drop, and now you want to get it taken off your record, when you go to see Dr. Raju, our new Vice President for Academic Affairs, She's going to look at this ICR and say, you were told you were responsible for dropping the class, and you're going to be out of luck as to that. So you need to be aware that it's your responsibility to decide what you want to do about the class. Personally, my preferred choice that you make is that you come to class and participate and take the tests, and everybody does well. That's my best class, my best scenario. But I'm not living each of yours life, and life does happen. If something happens and you have a conflict or you have an electronic failure, send me an email or call me and leave a message. Let me know what's going on. If I know in advance what's happening, I can make things a little bit easier. I can give you a longer time period to take the test or whatever it may be. I can reopen the test if you have a glitch. If you don't tell me until after the fact, sometimes well after the fact, it's a little more difficult for me to be accommodating because I do allow you to drop your lowest test grade. If you miss a test and you don't have a reasonable explanation for why you were unable to take the test, my answer is going to be take the final. If there's something going on that's beyond your control, we can make arrangements for you to take the test even though it's at a later date if that is necessary. That's going to be at my discretion, but it's based upon what you can tell me. Um, 
With regard to the textbook, the prices had been significantly lower even about a week ago. There's enough demand that the prices have been going up, although textbooks.com is a good resource for it. Um, as I indicated in the interim, I uh, do have copies of the first chapter I can email out to you. If we continue to have um, issues, I may be able to email out other chapters as we need to um, so that we'll be able to be sure people do have the chapters to work from. I will be lecturing on the uh, the information from the book. I will be walking through the book and expounding on the information in the book. So it's very important to have the book, whether it's electronic or in print, available to you during class to ensure that you can follow along with what's in the book and to tie what you've read to what I'm talking about. Um, what else? Tarrant County College has a scholastic dishonesty policy. It is deemed to be unacceptable and not tolerated. The ICR goes on to explain scholastic dishonesty and where to find the policies in that regard. Um, the tests in this class will utilize Proctorio in order to minimize cheating on the tests. You'll have a specifically limited period of time and limited resources you can use. That is, you're not going to be able to use your notes or book when you're taking the exam. Um, the reality is that the only person who really gets cheated when you cheat is you. I don't give tests because I like stressing people out. I give tests to try to evaluate how much of the material we've covered you have actually absorbed. What have you actually learned about the subject matter we're dealing with? Um, with that in mind, being able to assess how much you truly understand and can apply the information provided helps you to know that you are in fact progressing. This is a survey class. We're going to cover a lot of different information, lots of different subject areas. That's so deep. A little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of something else. For everything we're going over in this class, you will have a full semester course that covers that material in one form or fashion or another. So when we go over federal courts and Texas courts, you're going to talk about that in detail in civil litigation class. We're going to do, do criminal justice in here and you'll take a court systems and practices class from the criminal justice program that will go in depth into those areas. You'll take a class in torts. You'll take two semesters of business law, one business law and one that is called business organizations that'll talk about contracts and the Uniform Commercial Code and all the different legal entities that are created in business. <clears throat> You'll have a wills class that covers wills and trusts and probate administration. <clears throat> so everything we go over in this class that we do at a cursory level, you'll get an in-depth explanation of through a legal specialty class that goes into much greater depth than otherwise. Um, and so my goal here is to give you enough of a flavor of all of these areas of law that when you see it a second time, it's not brand new and you have a basic understanding that makes it much, much easier to then gain fuller, deeper understanding of the material.
Any student who would like to be addressed by a preferred name can let me know and I will put it on my sheets for when I'm going through role. If you'd like it to be populated on the roster, you can fill out a form with the registrar's office to designate a preferred name. It's called a record maintenance form and if you fill that out, the registrar staff will update the appropriate field so that the preferred name will be listed on the class rosters. TCC libraries are offering curbside service or in the case of the Northeast Campus Library front door service. Um, students, faculty, and staff are not allowed in the building. The library has a small team during curbside hours that work on checking in and checking out materials and providing distribution. Some distribution is done by appointment or by phone call. If you need electronic devices, I sent out an announcement that was posted but also went out by email this morning listing the link where to go to order electronic devices that you need to support the work you are doing in classes. Whether you need um, a tablet that provides you with internet access or you need a laptop that gives you access to Blackboard or a Chromebook that gives you access online and to access the different websites, you can do that. There's also a part of the page where you can click that you need particular software that can be provided to you and there are um, links on the Blackboard page so if you need um, your device to impersonate a device with other software loaded on it we have that available to you as well. Um, please contact those entities as soon as possible. The sooner you have needed technical equipment, the better. If you have the correct equipment but it's not functioning properly, please do contact um, the help desk and they can assist you with reconfiguring things or making sure that what you're working with is compatible with and will work with our system to ensure the greatest level of learning possible. Curbside hours are 3 to 6 p.m. Monday and Tuesday and 9 till noon Wednesday and Thursday. Um, Monday through Saturday, Saturday the libraries maintain virtual hours where you can chat or talk to a librarian and for Northeast Campus you can also call the library and reach a librarian who can assist you with any of your needs. TCC provides free interactive online tutoring and learning assistance to all students. The online services are provided by trained staff who are familiar with TCC and the TCC professor expectations. Staff are available to answer questions, assist with course assignments, test preparation, and materials review. Um, you can access TCC learning assistance services by clicking tutoring at TCC in the My TCC resources list on the left side of My TCC, that is the Blackboard homepage. Um, and there is more information about learning assistance at www.tccd.edu slash academics slash academics dash health slash labs dash tutoring. So you have access to that. Any enrolled student can use any of the learning centers regardless of campus. Finally, while I am trained as a lawyer and I did in fact practice law for over a decade in, here in Tarrant County, I do not currently practice law nor do I give legal advice. On occasion I use fact-based scenarios to illustrate the applicability of legal information. This should not be interpreted as giving legal advice regarding a similar situation or as being suggestive of any course of action in a real life situation. If you have a legal problem or are in need of legal representation, I would be happy to refer you to several qualified attorneys practicing in the area who may be able to assist you. Please see me outside of class if you need such information and I will make that referral. 
Having now gone through the entire ICR, does anyone have any questions about how the course is going to work or the policies that are in effect? Anything at all? Okay, I am going to go ahead. That is correct. You can pick whichever, for each day you can pick whether you attend the morning or the evening. So today's Tuesday. You didn't come to the 930 class, but you came to the 630 class. But on Thursday, you want to come at 930 because you're busy at 630. Just come to the 930 class. I sent out a notice with the recurring links over the weekend that has the links, both the dial-up links and the direct computer links to both the morning and the evening classes. So you'll have the link to whichever works. Um, I'm not sure how Proctorio works with Mac MacBooks. I will have to find out. Um, I'm not real. I'm fairly technically technologically savvy with the equipment I have, but I haven't done a lot of the work with it. Um, I've been told that you can use, and Dan Danny's sharing that she has a Mac and has used it, but you do have to have the latest updates. Um, and Abigail is saying that it works as long as you use Chrome, so that helps. When we get closer to test time, we'll go over and I will post um, some tutorials for how to download the Proctorio extension so that it will just automatically work when you go to take a test. When I was practicing law, I had a general civil practice focusing mainly on family law and probate law, although I've done a little bit of everything with regard to civil law. I've done very little criminal work. Um, I no longer practice law for a number of reasons. Basically, I have been coordinating or co-coordinating this program and teaching in this program for, well, this is the beginning of my 24th year. And I had been practicing law when I got this job, but I found that you couldn't work full time, teach a full five course load, run the program, advise the students, hire the adjuncts, handle a myriad of other things I was doing, raise a family, and also practice law. So I stopped practicing law. Um, it was just the path of least resistance. Um, it has worked very, very well. When I started out, I had, when I started, I had one child in kindergarten and I was pregnant. I now have a 20, an almost 29 year old and a 23 year old, both college graduates. So my entire, for, the entire formative years of my children, they have grown up with my students. Um, and it's funny because I get students who ask what they're doing now, and it's a lot of fun because they've been around. They used to come to student paralegal association meetings. In fact, my daughter still says she's at, in St. Louis now and not here, but when we have an election meeting, she said, and I'm not there to count the ballots because <laughs> she used to help count ballots whenever we had officer elections and things. So. Um, they've had a good time. Now, my son who was in kindergarten when I started now has a bachelor's, a master's, and a PhD in astrophysics. And my daughter has <laughs> a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering and is a master's candidate also in mechanical engineering. Um, so they did pretty well. Growing up with all of my students, they used to occasionally come to class. It was fun. Any questions about the program? Um, I will, uh, 
through appointment, be happy to meet with you, go over where you're at in the program, what you need to take and when, and create what we call a roadmap, which is a one-page color-coded sheet that says, take these courses this semester, and it does your whole program until you're done. Um, I think the roadmap is such an essential and important part of what you need starting out the program so that you step off on the right foot and you just keep fit going straight through that I will give you extra credit in this class and also in legal research class for getting a roadmap. Um, so that's nice free points for doing something that directly benefits you moving forward through the program. I will be happy to meet with you um, during office hours to go over that. Just send me an email and we will set that up. Um, the Student Paralegal Association is um, an organization on campus specifically for students in the paralegal program. Um, it does have an organization page on Blackboard. Um, you can search for it under the Northeast Campus looking for Student Paralegal Association or SPA, S-P-A, um, and you can click to join. We generally meet the first Saturday of every month of the long semesters. Um, my guess is that we will not meet on the first Saturday of September since the first Saturday of September is the Saturday before Labor Day when all of us are off. Um, but I have not had contact yet with the current officers who were elected in the spring to determine whether we're going to meet. We are do have the capability to meet online and we will try to do that to keep people informed. Yes, Nikki. I, I apologize. Um, I was wondering, um, when I signed up for the course, they were talking about asynchronous meetings. Are those still occurring because of COVID, or will those um, be no. cast aside? The, the asynchronous meetings were going to happen because legal research was going to need to have some lessons in the library and I couldn't very well teach online and have students who needed to be in the library at 8 o'clock taking an online class at 6.30 to 7.50. However, um, since that plan was put into place, as of Monday the Chancellor signed a contract for us to obtain the Westlaw campus database in addition to Nexus Uni and so we will have more online availability of legal research materials and so the in, in the library sessions for research will now be online as well and so we won't have to have any asynchronous um, classes for intro. Intro will meet synchronously the entire semester. There will be a couple of days where we're scheduled normally for class where class will not meet um, for a variety of reasons. I serve as an election judge in Tarrant County and so for example class will not meet on November 3rd which is election day. I hope everyone will either vote early or vote on election day. I think voting is very important um, but class won't meet because I will be processing voters and ensuring that the election runs properly. Um, so there will be a couple of days during the semester where class will not meet. You'll have a reading assignment or other materials to work on, but um, otherwise class will meet as normally scheduled, and I'll go over what you need to read for each class as we go along. Um, yes, the Legal Research 1303 class meets at 8 o'clock, and we will be meeting that class you'll need to go to the course page for 1303, go to the class lectures and log into that session which will be available starting about 745. Class itself will start right at 8 o'clock and we'll do a lot of what we did just now in that class. Um, and then we'll start covering actual material in both this class and legal research starting on Thursday. 
since I was not sure to what extent people had textbooks, I didn't want to schedule starting to talk about materials when people didn't have the book to follow along in. And so we will start that on Thursday, which will give you time to email me if you need me to send you a copy of the first chapter, which will be covering the next couple of class periods so that you'll have it to read and then to reference during class. Any other questions? Okay. So you only need to read the first chapter for next time. That is correct. Okay, before you all leave, let me go through and check the roll sheet. Um, I'm just going to call the names of people I did not see, and you can tell me if you're here so that either by raising your hand or posting something in the chat or just saying that you're here, all of that will work. Laurel Arvide. Okay. Taylor Gay. Jessica Ortega. Ah. Okay. Bethany Vaught. Don't see. Tamara Williams. Nope. Okay. And I think, yes, Nayeli, I did get you from the morning class. I was just about to look to see. Yeah, I got you down as well, Tanya. You are welcome. Um, let's see who else I saw come in. Make sure I didn't. Yes, I have Alicia from the morning class. Is Jackie Farrell here? No. Okay. Tequila Palmer. I do not have. And that's everyone. And Mary, I got you on the morning class as well. Yes, I have you. Very good. We have actually a really good turnout for both of these sections. Okay, let me go back to the chat. Um, Renisa, if you will email me at the email that's in the chat, karen.silverberg at tccd.edu, and let me know that you need Chapter 1, I will email you a PDF file of the first chapter. Um, if you'll go back through the chat, there were several people who indicated places where they were able to locate the book. Um, we will be starting to discuss Chapter 1 on Thursday, but I can send you a copy of that chapter, so you won't have to have the book until um, a week or so. If you ordered your book from the book, book or books from the bookstore, you are likely to get an email from them saying that they are out of stock or back ordered or that they have canceled the order because they have sudden they took orders they couldn't fill and didn't tell people until just very very recently so check your TCC email or whatever email you used when you ordered your books um, and see if you have an email from the bookstore I would recommend checking online. There had been books at Amazon, although I understand they have gotten very, very expensive, um, and I do not recommend that. Um, you don't need the Texas Courts book until November, so give that a little bit of a rest. Um, I've checked Chegg and Abe books and Biblio. Um, Textbooks.com is also a good resource. Um, so there are some out there. 
Um, I will see if I find any other resources and post them in an announcement if I find anything other than what we've just discussed. As I indicated, I will send you out chapter one if we get closer to finishing chapter one and getting ready for chapter two and people are still having book trouble, I will send out um, the uh, a PDF of chapter two as well. So there will be some options. I don't know about the PDF at Abe Books. I know Abe, abebooks.com is a legitimate website where they sell books because I've bought books from them before. I don't know about anything about a PDF site. A lot of the ones that are PDF sites do not seem to be um, legitimate sites. If you're wanting a PDF, email me a chapter at a time and we'll see what we can take care of either through me or through the library as if you were reading the book in the library. Does that help? It's my pleasure. My goal is to make the book as available to you as possible. Um, I am actually communicating with or attempting to communicate with the authors of the book to see if they'll authorize me or a group of paralegal faculty to update the book and make it available um, as an open resource. We're still in negotiations on that, but if that comes about, it'll make it a lot easier for people to be able to access the book, but we're not there quite yet. Um, I'm glad that you checked and verified. Um, as I said, if you'll individually email me, I will send those out just as soon as I finish class. Anyone have any other questions? I will say that half price books, especially the half price books um, on Harwood near the campus, often has copies of these books and they are a very good resource and they generally don't jack up the price. So you might check with them as well. If there are no other questions, you are free to go. I will stick around for a few minutes in case anyone has any other questions. If you're in the legal research class, I'll be there about five or ten minutes till the hour and we will start right at eight o'clock. Have a great evening. See you then. You are very welcome. You too, Lindsay. Have a great evening. Nora and Naomi, have a great evening. I will see you, some of you in research class. I'll see you tomorrow, Mary. Thank you. Thank you, Rahim and Zubeda and Kayla. I will see you in the next class. Um, if you would email karen.silverberg at tccd.edu, that's the best email to use to set up an appointment, please. Willie, yes, I did get you on attendance. Thank you for checking.
Thank you, Kaylee.